Welcome to the 2023 proposed hunting season's presentation brought to you by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department's Jackson Region. I'm Cheyenne Stewart, the Wildlife Management Coordinator for Jackson Region, and the seasons will be presented to you by our North Jackson Wildlife Biologist, Allie Kornmalch, and our South Jackson District Wildlife Biologist, Gary Freilich. While this presentation summarizes the season proposals for Jackson Region, you can find season proposals by all other regions and or biologist districts on our website. So we encourage you to view other region season proposal presentations as well as statewide presentations on general hunting regulations, small and upland game, migratory game birds, and fall and spring wild turkeys. Most important, it is important for us to get your feedback on these season proposals. And we will provide detailed instructions at the end of this presentation about how to do that. The Targi Mule Deer Herd is a small herd unit with one hunt area, Area 149, located on the west side of the Teton Range along the Idaho border. There are relatively few deer in this herd and winter survey data are not collected since the majority of the herd winters in Idaho. This herd is managed to provide hunter opportunity and satisfaction. Hunter satisfaction in 2022 was 71%, which is above the objective of 60%. There are no proposed changes to the general season for 2023. This herd unit is part of Region H. The non-resident quota for Region H is also proposed to remain the same as last year at 600 licenses. In recent years, the Type 3 and Type 8 Whitetail deer licenses for this area have been grouped with other hunt areas in the Jackson region, as you can see in the first two rows of this table. However, after hearing feedback from hunters in Area 149, we're proposing to separate the Type 3 and Type 8 licenses back to just being valid for Area 149, as you can see in the bottom two rows of this table. We're proposing to allocate 25 licenses for the Type 3 and 25 licenses for the Type 8 in 2023. The purpose of these whitetail deer licenses are to suppress whitetail deer population numbers and curb spatial expansion through increased harvest. The Sublet Mule Deer Herd is a large herd that spans the Jackson, Pinedale, and Green River regions and includes 14 hunt areas. Hunt areas 150 through 156, as well as area 146, are within the Jackson region. For more detailed information about this herd and for hunt areas outside of the Jackson region, please watch the Pinedale region's PowerPoint presentation. The majority of the herd's winter ranges are located near Pinedale, Farson, and Rock Springs. This winter, winter conditions in these areas have been above average, which is leading to higher than normal deer winter mortality. Due to these above average winter conditions, we are proposing an antler point restriction for the 2023 hunting seasons herd wide. This restriction would require a mule deer to have at least three points or more on either antler in order to be harvested. There are no other proposed changes. This herd is within non-resident region H and there is no proposed change to the 600 non-resident license quota. There are no proposed changes to the Type 3 or Type 8 whitetail deer licenses 
in the combined hunt areas of 148, 150, 151, 152, 155, and 156, other than separating out hunt area 149, which is on the west side of the Tetons in the Targhee mule deer herd to have its own type three and type eight licenses. The purpose of these whitetail deer licenses are to suppress whitetail deer population numbers and curb spatial expansion through increased harvest. The Targi elk herd is a small elk herd located on the west side of the Teton Range along the Idaho border and contains one hunt area, Area 73. There are no proposed changes for the 2023 hunting seasons for the Targi elk herd. Winter surveys are not conducted for this herd since the majority of the herd winters in Idaho. This herd is managed to provide hunter opportunity and satisfaction. Hunting is difficult in this area due to very steep terrain and difficult access. In 2022, hunter satisfaction was 81%, which is above the objective of 60%. 60 elk were harvested from this herd unit in 2022. The Jackson Elk Herd includes hunt areas 70 through 72, 75, and 77 through 83. The objective for this herd is a winter trend count of 11,000 elk plus or minus 20%. The 2022 trend count was below this number at 10,064 elk. It is below the 11,000 objective, but still within the 20% buffer. This is a decrease by about 1,000 elk compared to last year's count. This decrease was mainly caused by a higher than normal fall harvest. The area received significant snowfall in mid-November, which caused elk to migrate earlier than they have in recent years, leading to higher harvest in the southern hunt areas, particularly hunt area 77, which is the National Elk Refuge, and Hunt Area 80, which is located to the east of the National Elk Refuge. This winter, a total of 7,406 elk were counted on supplemental feed on the National Elk Refuge. A total of 1,933 elk were counted in the Grovant drainage, and 725 elk were counted on other native winter ranges, mainly in the Buffalo Valley, Spread Creek, foothills to the east of the National Elk Refuge and areas on the northern end of the National Elk Refuge. This year's calf ratio for the herd is 22 and the bull ratio is 34. These ratios are very similar to what we've been seeing in recent years. Chronic wasting disease was first detected in this herd in 2020 from a harvested cow elk. A total of 1,209 hunter harvested elk samples have been tested during the past three years and no additional CWD positive elk have been detected. Therefore, CWD remains at a very low level in this herd. In general, the hunting structure for this herd focuses on cow-calf harvest in the southern hunt areas where elk reproduce at over twice the rate of northern migratory elk. Hunting seasons in the northern hunt areas and in the Grovant drainage are mainly structured around antlered elk harvest. Despite this year's earlier migration in November, we're generally seeing a trend toward warmer, drier falls and later elk migrations leading to overall lower harvest during most years. Proposed changes for the 2023 hunting seasons includes a reduction in the license quotas for hunt area 75, which you can see in this table. 
Hunt Area 75 is within Grand Teton National Park's elk reduction program. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department and Grand Teton National Park annually review the status of the Jackson elk herd and jointly agree upon the need for and the structure of the Hunt Area 75 season. This year, we're proposing decreasing the type four licenses from 50 to 20 and the type six licenses from 425 to 20. The season dates are also proposed to be shortened by about two weeks due to many fewer hunters on the landscape. The 2023 season dates would coincide with the typical period of the highest elk movement through the hunt area, giving hunters good opportunity to harvest an elk. The main reasons for this change in Hunt Area 75 is the lower overall count of the herd this year by about 1,000 elk below objective, as well as the high cow harvest last fall. A total of 634 cows were harvested from the herd last fall, which has decreased overall cow numbers in the herd. Due to these lower cow numbers, Fewer calves are expected to be born this summer and added to the herd, and therefore the herd is not expected to grow as much as normal before the hunting season. Therefore, many fewer elk will need to be harvested through the Grand Teton National Park Elk Reduction Program to keep the herd at objective. Other changes to the Jackson elk herd hunting seasons include adding a day to the youth hunt on the National Elk Refuge in Hunt Area 77 to bring it to a total of four days. This hunt was very popular this year and many youth hunters were able to harvest an elk. You'll also see there are some slight changes to the opening and closing dates of Hunt Area 77 to coincide with certain days of the week and the permit system. We are also proposing to increase the Hunt Area 78 Type 1 licenses from 50 to 75. This is due to very high success on this license uh, in recent years. Last year, the hunter success was 90% on this license. And there's also a desire to continue to increase harvest on this herd segment which are elk that primarily live on private lands and can cause damage, particularly later in the season. We are also proposing some changes to the Hunt Area 82 Type 4 license this year. Last year, this license ran through November 15th. We are proposing backing this date off to November 5th. However, making these licenses valid for an extended season that would run from November 6th through January 31st, valid on private lands in Hunt Area 82, Area 81, and Area 70. During this extended portion of the season, these licenses would help reduce elk damage issues on private lands, primarily in the Grovant drainage and Buffalo Valley, when elk occur there later in the fall and the winter. Due to high harvest success last year on these licenses of 83%, we're proposing to increase the license quota from 40 to 75 licenses in order to have enough hunters available to help harvest elk during the extended season on private lands. The Fall Creek Elk Herd. The 2023 Fall Creek Elk Herd hunting seasons for areas 84 and 85 are as proposed. The current trend count resulted in approximately 4,800 elk being counted. The trend count based population objective is 4,400 elk. Consequently, the proposed hunting season structure will promote any elk hunting spikes excluded from September 26 through October 31st. In area 84, general license antlerless elk hunting will be extended to November 15th, and the number of type six cow-calf only licenses are proposed to remain at 300 licenses 
in response to higher numbers of elk counted on the Horse Creek and Camp Creek feed grounds. In Area 85, a general license November antlerless elk season is proposed to be added to the 2023 hunt season that will run November 1st through November 15th. Also in Area 85, Type 6 cow or calf licenses are proposed to remain at 100 licenses. The number of Area 84 Type 1 licenses valid for any elk are proposed to increase from 20 to 35 licenses, and in areas 84, 85 Type 7 antlerless elk licenses are proposed to remain at 250 in order to address elk depredation on private lands and prevent co-mingling with livestock through January 31st. The Afton Elk Herd. This proposal outlines the hunting seasons in the Afton Elk Herd, hunt areas 88, 89, 90, and 91. In area 88, no changes are proposed for the number of licenses issued for the 2023 hunting season. The Type 1 license will remain at 40. The late November season is pro proposed to close on November 30th instead of January 31st, as in previous years. In areas 89 and 90, a shortened season is proposed to continue in 2023 that closes on October 25th, but allows the take of any elk. The adjustment to any elk hunting opportunity will reduce hunting pressure and harvest on the antlered segment of the population. Consequently, we are proposing to close the general season on October 25th, similar to the 2021 and 2022 seasons in order to promote retention of antlered elk in the postseason population. In Area 91, the current proposal attempts to address long-term elk distribution along the Idaho-Wyoming state line. Limited quota license holders will have the opportunity to pursue antlerous elk throughout most of the hunt area in addition to the area west of Wyoming Highway 89 and south of Wyoming Highway 239 and off national forest lands from October 1st through January 31st. The Turkey Moose Herd is a relatively small moose herd that lives on the west side of the Teton Range along the Idaho border. There are no changes proposed for the 2023 hunting seasons. Due to the new 90% resident, 10% non-resident license allocation beginning this year, all five licenses would go to residents in 2023. In 2024, managers would plan to offer one of those licenses to a non-resident. This herd is not surveyed during the winter due to migration of moose into Idaho and difficult sightability of moose from the air due to conifer tree cover. The herd is managed using metrics related to average days of harvest and age of harvested moose. In 2022, hunter success was 100%. For many years, this herd was meeting its objectives However, this has changed in the last few years. The time it is taking hunters to harvest a moose is increasing. In 2023, it took hunters an average of 14 days to harvest a moose. And the average age of harvested moose is decreasing, signaling that the numbers and quality of moose are likely declining in this herd. Managers will be tracking these trends very closely and may consider changing licenses in the future. The Jackson Moose Herd continues to be significantly below its population objective of 800 moose. A total of 297 moose were counted during this year's winter count. Herd numbers have remained low but stable for the past decade, fluctuating between about 250 and 350 moose. The calf ratio this year was 38 calves per 100 cows which is a dip from the calf ratios we have been seeing in recent years, which are more around 50 calves per 100 cows. The bull ratio was the highest we've ever recorded for this herd, 
at 118 bulls per 100 cows. This high bull ratio is why some limited bull harvest is still possible in this herd, even though it is well below objective. Despite this high bull ratio, hunters report having a hard time finding quality bulls during the hunting season. However, hunter success in 2022 was still 90%. We're proposing extending the season until November 15th this year to give hunters more opportunity to harvest a bull later into the fall. Also, due to the new 90% resident, 10% non-resident license allocation, we're proposing that hunt area 1728 would have four residents and one non-resident this year, and hunt area 18 would have five residents this year. We plan to move the one non-resident license between these two hunt areas each year, so we would plan to have the non-resident license available in hunt area 18 in 2024. The Targi Bighorn Sheep Herd is a relatively small herd that lives in the Teton Mountain Range, partially within Grand Teton National Park and partially outside of the park in hunt area 6. We're proposing increasing licenses for this herd from one to two licenses in 2023. One license would go to a resident hunter and one to a non-resident hunter. The herd is currently meeting its average age of harvested rams objective, which is a five-year average of six to eight years old for harvested rams. However, it is not meeting its hunter success objective, which is a five-year average of at least 50% success. Only one hunter has successfully harvested a sheep in the past five years. This area is extremely difficult to hunt in due to steep terrain, minimal horse access, low density of sheep, and movement of rams in and out of the open hunt area throughout the season. All harvest in the past two decades has occurred in the southern portion of the herd. Therefore, managers are proposing to encourage harvest in the northern portion of the herd by opening the hunt early north of the South Badger Creek drainage beginning on August 1st. Then the entire hunt area would open on September 1st. The objective for the Jackson Bighorn Sheep Herd, which includes Hunt Area 7, is 400 sheep plus or minus 20%. The population has been growing since its last pneumonia die-off occurred in 2012 and is now above objective. In 2020 and 2021, managers counted over 500 sheep in this herd. Historically, we have seen pneumonia die-offs happen when the herd is approaching or at 500 sheep. The count this winter was difficult due to unusual distribution of bighorn sheep, and we believe that we missed some groups during our survey. This winter's count was only 407 sheep, which we believe is not accurate and is lower than what is actually out there. Currently, we have over 20 sheep collared in this herd as part of a University of Wyoming study, and we have not seen any indication of a herd-wide pneumonia die-off that would explain this winter's lower count. The lamb ratio for this herd is 30 lambs per 100 ewes, and the adult ram ratio is 49 rams per 100 ewes. During this year's winter survey, we saw 53 rams of at least three-quarter curl or better. We are proposing to decrease the type one licenses from 16 to 12 in 2023. Even though this herd is above objective, hunter success and age of harvested rams have declined in recent years. Hunter success in 2022 was only 63% 
an average age of harvested rams was only six and a half years old. For these reasons, we're proposing to decrease type one licenses, but open the rifle season earlier, beginning on August 15th, to give hunters more time to harvest. Due to the new 90% resident, 10% re non-resident license allocation, 11 licenses are proposed to go to residents and one to a non-resident. The herd has experienced two pneumonia die-offs in approximately the last 20 years, one in 2001 and one in 2012. Both of these die-offs occurred when the herd exceeded its population objective. Wyoming Game and Fish and University of Wyoming have been collaborating on a research project for the past six years on this sheep herd, where we've been measuring the body condition of bighorn ewes twice a year. During the past three years, we've seen a significant drop in body condition. We believe that this could be a signal that a pneumonia die-off may be imminent if the numbers of sheep in this herd are not reduced. For this reason, a type six ewe lamb license was created beginning last year in order to reduce the population size. Success on this license was lower than we expected at about 40% hunter success with a total of six ewes harvested. We're proposing to increase the type six licenses to 30 this year. Due to the new 90% resident, 10% non-resident license allocation, 27 of these licenses would go to residents and three would go to non-residents. With a similar harvest success to last year, about 12 ewes are expected to be harvested which would be close to about a 7% reduction in the numbers of ewes in the Grovant segment of the herd. Interest in this license was high last year with a draw rate of four, only 4% 4 for residents and 7% for non-residents. This license would be valid for the Grovant drainage again this year, which includes all tributaries that flow into the Grovant River within the hunt area. Managers are continuing to work closely with the University of Wyoming on an ongoing research project that will monitor the effect of ewe lamb harvest on the population, specifically on disease, body condition, and demographics of the herd. Palisades Mountain Goat Population. In Area 2, a total of five licenses valid for any goat are proposed to be issued in 2023. The season will run September 1st through October 31st. The five licenses issued in 2023 will be a decrease from the eight licenses typically issued because of a significantly lower mountain goat trend count in 2022. A total of 48 mountain goats were counted in August 2022, which is the lowest trend count documented since 1996. The management emphasis in Hunt Area 4 will remain the elimination of mountain goats from the Teton Mountain Range. A total of five licenses are proposed to be issued in 2023, which reflects a management program designed to eliminate mountain goats from the Teton Mountain Range. The population objective for the Jackson bison herd is 500 bison plus or minus 20%. This year's winter count was 432 bison, which is below the objective, but within the buffer range. The population numbers have been slowly decreasing below the 500 objective for the past five years. The calf ratio this winter was 46 calves per 100 cows and the adult bull ratio was 42 bulls per 100 cows. Bison hunting has been difficult in recent years, particularly for the type four cow-calf license holders due to delayed movements of bison from Grand Teton National Park into open hunt areas, especially the National Elk Refuge. 
The majority of cow-calf harvest occurs in late January, typically only within a period of a few days, which does not give type four hunters very much opportunity. For this, re for this reason, managers have been reducing the number of type four licenses in recent years and decided to remove this license type in 2023. Bison harvest in 2022 was higher than it has been for many years due to earlier snowfall in November and December that caused bison to migrate from Grand Teton National Park to the National Elk Refuge earlier than they have been. Last fall's hunter success was 84% compared to the last five-year average, which is only 61%. Since harvest was higher than expected this past year, and the population is continuing to trend below the 500 objective, we're proposing to cut back on licenses in 2023 to allow this herd to start to grow back toward the 500 objective. Therefore, we are proposing a total of 50 type one licenses for 2023. Thank you for watching the presentation. If you have any questions or would like additional information, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can contact the district biologist or game warden appropriate to any hunt area that you would like more information about. Those phone numbers are available on this page. We would like to hear from you. Getting public comment on these proposed seasons is a very important part of our season setting process. Comments can be submitted in three main ways. The first being online through the Get Involved site of the Game and Fish website. Another is in writing and mailed to the Wyoming Game and Fish Department Attention Regulations at 3030 Energy Lane in Casper, Wyoming 82604. The other method is to submit written comment to your local regional game and fish office. All comments must be submitted and or received by 5 p.m. on March 29, 2023, and will be submitted to the Game and Fish Commission and reviewed at the April 17th and 18th meeting in Casper, Wyoming. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to hearing from you.